Hallelujah and thank you. Today, let's continue our second session of Noah who built the ark, focusing on the relationship between Noah and Jesus Christ in the subtitle, The Anticipation of the Messiah. The word of life today comes from Genesis 6 verse 14. Let us read. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is the word of God. Amen. Now, let's go over the relationship between Noah and Jesus Christ. As we have seen so far, Lamech anticipated the Messiah upon the birth of his son Noah. Let us take a look at Genesis 5 verse 28 and 29. After become, becoming the father of a son, Lamech named him Noah. This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. So we have studied that this son primarily refers to Noah, but ultimately it points to Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of true rest. Here we can see that the content of Genesis 5 verses 28 and 29 transcends the typical genealogical format found in Genesis 5. Let's look at Genesis 5 verses 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. They all follow the pattern of mentioning the age at which they became the father of their sons, became the father of Kenan, became the father of Mahalalel, became the father of Jared, became the father of Enoch. However, in Genesis 5 verse 28, it simply states, he became the father of a son. Without recording the name, unlike the previous verses that mention the name of the son. Up to this point, the pattern has been to mention they lived a number of years and became the father of someone. However, when it comes to Noah, the pattern is broken, simply stating he became the father of a son. This refers to a particular figure that everyone is waiting for. So it indicates waiting for the Messiah who comes as the seed of the woman promised in Genesis 3 verse 15. The awaited son the commonly expected son that everyone is anticipating. In Genesis 5 verse 29, this one is simply written as Je in Hebrew. It means he. It indicates a specific son. Through this expression, we can discover the specific son of God, the unique son, the only begotten son, Jesus Christ. In John 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This, his only begotten son, in certain English translation, the International Standard Version, is rendered as the unique son. Unique son. Unique son means a one-of-a-kind son. There is no other son like this in the world. God came in human form and he is God, the Son, Jesus Christ. But also, he is called the Son of God. Originally, he is God, but he was also called the Son of God. How can the Father and the Son be the same? Such a Son does not exist in this world. So Jesus alone becomes the only begotten Son, the unique Son. In this sense, Reverend Huizan Abraham Park summarizes it like this on page 128 of the Genesis genealogies. The word Son is used distinctively in Genesis 5 verse 28. The author makes the extra effort to suggest that this was not just another Son among many, but rather a unique Son much like the only begotten son, just as Eve had rejoiced when giving birth to her first son, saying, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord, so too 
Did Noah's birth give rise to expectation, joy, and meaning because this son was a type of Jesus Christ who was to come as the only begotten son? Noah is a figure who foreshadows Jesus Christ, the Messiah. But what are the tasks of the Messiah? It is to bring true peace to the world. So in Genesis 5 verse 29, Lamech named his son Noah. Because the word Noah comes from the Hebrew word Noah, which means rest and comfort. So the son's name was given as Noah with the hope that this one would give us rest. Noah built the ark during the flood judgment. And he saved his family, didn't he? This brought true peace to his family. Take a look at Genesis 7 verse 23. Who were the only survivors? When God judged the world with the flood, they all died. Genesis 7 verse 23 says, Only Noah was left together with those that were with him in the ark. Therefore, there was the ark of Noah. The ark was, in other words, a refuge. Didn't the people who entered it survive? So this ark becomes a spiritual refuge. Noah represents Jesus Christ, who will save the whole world and bring true rest and peace to humanity. So Jesus comforts us in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Reverend Hison Abraham Park concludes as follows, on page 129 of the Genesis genealogies. When, in his second coming, Christ arrives to judge the whole world by fire, he will once again save his chosen people and leave them to heaven, the kingdom of true Sabbath. That's what he concluded. In the end, the ark was indeed the true place of rest. Therefore, it can be said that this ark is a foreshadowing of heaven. The kingdom of heaven will become our eternal and true sanctuary of rest. Today, I hope that we may all enter into the true place of rest, and I pray that may this blessing be upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, admits the flood judgment upon the world. Noah's ark became a spiritual refuge, ensuring the salvation of Noah's family. Now, Jesus Christ will surely come again to lead us to the eternal true refuge, which is the kingdom of heaven. Father God, apart from Noah's family, all others face judgment. May you guide us to believe in your word until the end, just like Noah's family, enabling us to enter into the true refuge, the spiritual ark, and thus avoid the place of final judgment. We believe that today, Father, you will lead us and grant us victory. We offer our heartfelt thanks, and we earnestly pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.